The title of this video is CIA BS number one. And we'll have some more to come after this one. Surveillance in Moscow was the most difficult kind of surveillance that we encountered around the world. We didn't have Paris rules or Buenos Aires rules. There were no other rules except Moscow rules because it was such a difficult place for us to work. Hi, I'm Jana Mendez. I'm the former chief of disguise for the... Jana Men Dez. Men Dez. Chief of Disguise. Well, guess what? A man is in disguise. <laughs> okay, let's just take a look at the hand signals. Come on now, take a look at the hand signal. It's pretty obvious what's going on here. Here we have two sevens, a seven and a seven. We also have a triangle. Okay, triangle. Sorry about that. But anyhow, you have the two triangles, one that points down and then another triangle that would point up and that would constitute your uh, hexagram. So this is the bottom triangle for as above so below you can clearly see this is a man pretending to be a woman former chief of disguise right this is just another episode of Maxwell Smart <laughs> and get smart okay but let's listen to what he has to say to us. CIA. Today I'm going to talk about some of the CIA's gadgets that we used during the Cold War. I worked for the Office of Technical Service at the CIA. We used to always think of it as CIA's Q. We were the gadget people. Everything that we did in Moscow had to be done clandestinely. You couldn't overtly go out and collect intelligence. We all had surveillance, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It didn't matter where you were. If you were in your apartment, which would be in an embassy compound, you'd have surveillance in the walls, and it would be live surveillance. We had something of a breakthrough in uh, determining whether or not we had surveillance, and that was uh, a piece of equipment that we call the SRR, 100. It was actually composed of three different pieces. One was some small Phonak ear devices that went into your ear. They were ear pieces. And they were actually commercially available. But we would... Okay, it goes into your, your ear. They're nonsense. Okay? Now let me tell you something. <laughs> there is absolutely no need to spy on the Soviet Union. Cold War is a nonsense war. Why do I say that? Because the Western powers such as the United States, Great Britain, and European nations literally built up the Soviet Union. Yes, that is correct. The Soviet Union had basically nothing. And it was through the cooperation with the Western powers that the Soviet Union began to have something. Now, if you doubt my word, I want to direct you to Antony Sutton, S-U-T-T-O-N, who worked at the Hoover Institute, and he produced, I think, a three-volume set where he will show you the trails all lead to this conclusion. 
the paper trails, the money trails, the power trails, the uh, exchange of information, the bringing of equipment, everything shows that the Western powers created the Soviet Union. Hence, it was all a big joke. The Soviet Union <laughs> was basically just another Western power in disguise so that there could be a hoax, phony, cold war. So all this stuff about putting it in your ear and everything and listening devices, that's for you. They're stuffing BS into your ear. So you believe the BS. Listen, it gets even a little more hokey. Mold your ear and create a new inner ear for you that would sit in on top of the phonak. We would paint them to match your ear. There was a neck ring that went with it. Was... Notice how she said your ear. <laughs> why, why didn't she or he say we molded it to match our agent's ear? Did you notice the personalization? Your ear? Because right now, if you're watching the video that, that they've made, your, your ear is captive to their nonsense. Okay? It was an induction piece of technology, and then there was a receiver itself. Those were tuned into KGB surveillance frequencies, and we had a fairly... Again, take a look at the hands. The hands are forming that, that, do, that downward triangle and the double seven. Okay? and he is dressed in, it appears to be a dark blue. And blue is the color of the starry. And then red is usually the color of your passion for the story. You desire it, you want it. But this is the color of the story, the hoax story, the nonsense, the BS comfortable sense that if we had surveillance following us, they were using radios, we were on their frequency, that we would be able to hear them, that we would be able to correlate if we turned right or if we turned left, that we would hear them calling that out. He's turned. So you have to turn right or turn left to be able to hear with your little frequency device, right? right he's turning left it wasn't foolproof but it was enough to give us a very good sense of if there was anybody back there knowing that you were being watched would mean that that day all you would do is perfectly innocuous things you would there's no need to do anything because the soviet union was working extensively with the united states to produce hoaxes. So there was no need for a spy anywhere for any reason. They're all on the same team. And that's what the hoax is. The hoax is that you were led to believe that the Soviet Union was just waiting to send nuclear missiles to every city in the United States and blow it up. Ha! Nuclear missiles are a hoax. They were just part of the team. And it's hoaxers like this that create videos to continue the hoax in people's minds. Okay? And once again, you're basically looking here at a man in disguise telling you that she, this care actor, care actor, was chief of disguise. Hey, 
Watch Inspector Clouseau. You'll learn more. Watch Get Smart. You'll learn more than listening to this yo-yo. Well, let's finish the video so I can get on to CIA BS number two. We're finishing BS number one. Not do anything operational that day because you were under surveillance. Another method of losing surveillance was... Okay, we'll stop right there and we'll be doing another BS of the CIA. Thank you for watching.